Hey folks, it's Ike with Big Techs here today with Chris from Blue Force Gear, and he's going to be talking about their Vickers sling that they make. And Chris, thank you so much for coming down. Hey, thanks for letting me show up today and, and uh, work with you. Always a pleasure hanging out with you, especially in this professional capacity. Like what you guys do at BTO is the standard in the industry. And I know you're probably wondering why there's an M4A1, like circa, you know, 2008 for our purposes anyway, sitting on the table with a Vickers sling. And I'm, I'm pretty excited to talk about that today. Awesome. So thanks a lot, brother. Yeah, for sure. Y'all enjoy. Hey everybody, I'm Chris with Blue Force Gear here at uh, BTO in Conroe, Texas, having a great time. And uh, we're gonna talk about duty sling, all right? And uh, specifically uh, form, function, techniques, everything for Vickers sling. But before we get into that, it's like a lot of people run slings. It is, uh, um, as they should, the sling is the most underrated, underutilized critical piece of equipment that goes with duty guns. Um, for most of the people out there, you know, a, a rifle sling is a luggage strap that they just throw around their neck and they call it a day. Uh, and there's some little techniques out there for what, you know, do this, do this, whatever the case is. Bottom line is a duty sling needs, in my book, needs to have four things going for it. So four points of performance for a duty sling. Uh, probably need to go ahead and caveat the, the word duty. Uh, here's, you know, Book of Chris, which is just me talking shit. Uh, a duty sling or anything that is duty related would be, you know, definition of if this rifle is expressly intended for or has the potential to be used anywhere other than a flat range in a controlled environment, then I would term that a, a duty rifle, duty pistol, duty gear, whatever the case is. Uh, but just to put that out there, that's, that's my definition of the term. So four points of performance for a duty sling on a fighting carbine. Uh, would be this. Number one, I, I, I have to have a reliable and repeatable position in accordance with the rules of firearm safety when my hands are off the gun, all right? And that's just because the reality of it is we have to do a lot of things uh, that are not directly shooting related in the field environment, so off of the flat range. So the rules of firearm safety are still a thing. And if at all possible, I would love to have a, a duty sling on my fighting gun that allows me to have a reliable and repeatable position on my body in accordance with the rules of firearm safety when my hands are off the gun and maybe I even need to be a little, a little dynamic, you know, it's a stupid word, but I gotta move around. Um, that's a byproduct of how we attach slings to guns and where we attach slings to guns and then what we do with the gun when our hands are off of it. Uh, so I accomplish all of that with what I call front sling position, which you're looking at that right now. Uh, I.e., when my hands are off the gun, I just roll it over to the, in my case, the left side, and <laughs> sling kind of runs up, traps the magazine to my body, and I can walk around a little bit here. Uh, and you notice this barrel is about you know six inches off my support side foot, and it's not moving everywhere. My second point of performance for a duty sling, right? It has to have the ability to make what is inherently not a stable firing platform into a more stable firing platform. Uh, a lot of people make two-point adjustable slings, which is fantastic, right? Uh, but the whole reason that slings are adjustable is to make non-stable firing platforms more stable, all right? It's not a comfort issue. Uh, a lot of people are under the impression that the reason adjustable slings are made is, is for like, hey, you know, right here, I'm hands off gun, it's hitting me in the dick, that's not comfortable. Let me tighten it up. Now it's not hitting me in the dick. Cool, I'm glad I have an adjustable sling. That's not what they're for, all right? That's, that's, that's a byproduct of the technology. Uh, I'm sure there's probably some people designing them for that purpose, but whatever, right? Non-stable firing platform, more stable. How do we do that? It is again, a sizing and mounting issue, all right? So what is probably the most inherently non-stable firing platform? Standing offhand. So I run up, you know, I'm in this position for whatever reason, cold, wet, tired, hungry, just took a shit, gotta take a shit, whatever. This red dot will not settle down. You know, my, my wobble zone is just way too great. Can't handle it. So at any point during the shot process, it's adjustable so I can crank it all the way in and I just made a fifth point of contact on the gun, all right? The, you know, that wobble zone 
of that red dot or optic or whatever you got that's bloviating all over your target area, you know, put a fifth point of contact on the gun with that sling and freaking pull that, pull that area in, all right? You can't live there for five minutes, all right? Put your reticle where it needs to be, process the trigger, you're gonna get your hit. So that's what I need out of an adjustable sling is that ability to make non-stable firing platforms more stable. My third point of performance for a duty sling is this. It has gotta have a quick detach mechanism in the front of the gun or the rear of the gun, preferably both, all right? And that is for a number of reasons. However, the, the top most important reason is this. Uh, in the field environment, all right, when somebody is a casualty, take, it either gets injured for some other mechanism or gets shot, the first step to TCCC that we kind of maybe don't do the best job of talking about when it's applied in the field, uh, step one is get that fucking gun off of them. All right. Uh, sorry to use the language, but it is that important. So uh, the only thing I can do for somebody post getting a gun off them maybe is, is put a tourniquet on. But anything and everything else that needs to happen, I, I gotta get this thing off of my casualty or off of my patient because the rules of firearm safety are still real, especially in that kind of situation. So quick detach mechanisms front and rear of the gun give whoever's helping me the ability to just find a QD mechanism, bust it, and get that rifle off of that person safely and efficiently, right? And I like both of those things, uh, especially when it comes to you know guns and casualty treatment. Fourth point of performance for a duty sling is this, right? With my sling, how it's sized to me, my rifle, and my gear, I need to have full I call it carbine flow drill capability, uh, which basically means all of the positions that I could possibly need to be in with this gun. You know, it's on my front, it's high ready, it's this, it's lower, it's on my back, it's all that, all those things, transition to pistol. I have to have all of that capability without foreign object debris right in my workspace. That foreign object debris while running a carbine could be like a tail or something that's in my way. Or if you're doing some sort of, of test on here, here's all the positions I like to hit with my carbine or need to hit, high ready, retention, low ready, whatever your words are for all these things. I need to be able to rotate between all of those positions while this thing is A, not getting in my way, right? And B, still slung in a manner that gives me this ability in case I need to transition to pistol or do other work. Thanks for watching everybody. That's my dissertation on what a sling actually needs to accomplish uh, before we even start talking about, you know, type and, and who makes what and why and all that shit. Uh, but, you know, if you're gonna use a sling as a, as, a, as a luggage strap for a rifle, then like, yeah, by all means, just whoever makes the coolest stickers or t-shirts or whatever, just buy theirs. Uh, but if you want actual capability out of your sling, there's probably some information we need to go over and some techniques that go with it that will greatly enhance your capability with fighting carbine, right? Thanks everybody for your time. Appreciate you letting me be here.